Good morning. Welcome back in to Wake Up America. I'm Rob Finnerty with Allison Maloney. As more Omicron subvariants are reported throughout the country and the world, three more were just identified in Australia just ahead of their winter season, but without any information about the severity of the strains and more importantly, if hospitalization or death numbers are up, we just don't have that information. Yeah, here to discuss the latest in COVID headlines, we're joined by Executive Director of Health Equity Initiatives at Purdue University, Dr. Jerome Adams. Dr. Adams, welcome to Wake Up America. Always good to be with you. Great to have you. So before we get to COVID, I do want to get your initial reaction to uh, this leak that, that we were talking about the last day or so. Um, any, talk to us about the medical implications of this. Well, this is something that doctors and public health officials have been talking about a lot. And again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a doctor. I want to give you the medical um, uh, uh, perspective on this. As a physician, physicians are really concerned about the idea of legislators getting in the exam room. And I think regardless of how you feel about abortion, either of you would be really concerned if there were a bunch of legislators from any state um, saying what you and your doctor should and shouldn't be talking about in the exam room. That's number one. Number two, from a public health perspective, we know the data show us clearly that there are ways to stop abortion and the most effective ways to lower abortion rates are to increase education, to increase mm -hmm. job training, to lower poverty. And we know that women who get abortions, one out of seven of them say they do it to continue their education. So there are all sorts of public health implications to this discussion that we need to be um, really considering and talking about instead of just focusing on a downstream choice that's an unfortunate choice no matter which way you slice it. Yeah, doctor. Finally, as a husband, sorry, my go wife ahead, has sorry. had an ectopic pregnancy, and my wife actually had to have surgery for that pregnancy. Mm. I'm really concerned that some states want to say that that's illegal, and that's something as a doctor, I absolutely think women need to be able to have surgery to save their lives in yeah. certain situations, and we don't want to outlaw that from happening because that can put people like my own wife at risk. Absolutely. Yeah, Dr. Adams, that's a great point. And, and I think that the conversation is already being had once again about women that are, that are to your point, struggling and might not have access to good quality health care. Um, the numbers, according to Gallup, they, they've always stayed right around the same. Almost 70 percent of Americans think that Roe should stay in place. But an interesting part of that, that polling is that many also think that, that there should be a viability date, like what Mississippi is trying to do right now with uh, no abortions after 15 weeks in the state of Mississippi. That's the case that this is all uh, um, originating from at the Supreme Court. Do you think that could be the way through this? Well, I think if you're going to go that route, you need to make sure you have doctors, medical professionals, professional scientists helping define that and not having legislators define it. That's, again, what concerns us is, again, you've got people who have other agendas and they're giving their scientific opinions and, and really saying things that most uh, most obstetricians and gynecologists don't believe to be true. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I want to pivot, Dr. Adams, to COVID. So U.S. health officials have restated their recommendation that they should wear masks on any form of transportation. So CDC has declined to comment on the status of their appeal of the court ruling that goes against their recommendation. Uh, does this set a precedent of going against more mandates? What, what do you feel? How do you feel about this? Well, one of the things I'm concerned about is that mandates are the reason why we can swim safely in public pools. They're the reason why people at restaurants have to wash their hands after they use bathrooms before they serve your food. So mandates aren't inherently bad. I do think that we went a little heavy handed with mandates in many places and we didn't explain to people why mandates were necessary as well as we could have or should have. And we also didn't roll them back when the data suggested that they should have been in all cases. We have to own that. We've got to own that. But we can't just say, all public health mandates are bad. We also have to understand the science. One-way masking does work, especially if we, when you use a high-quality N95 mask. So to your viewers, even if you're not mandated, I want you to know that when I travel, and I just traveled yesterday, I wore an N95 mask in the airport and on mm -hmm. the plane to protect me, to protect my wife who's immunocompromised, and to protect people around me who I may not know yeah. who are immunocompromised. So you can still wear a mask out of compassion, even if you're not mandated to do it. Yeah. Let's have a discussion about the science and about caring for one another and not about whether or not the government should be telling you to do something. Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of people say, look, it, you know, if you want to wear a mask, you can wear a mask. Absolutely. Well, the 20th Surgeon General of the United States, Dr. Jerome Adams, thank you so much for joining us today, sir. Thanks, Dr. Adams. Thank you. Always good to be with you all. And great to have you.